watching Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke, and we want to thank you for joining us today. We've got a great message today, don't we, Al? We have a great message every time. Yes, we do. Amen. Yes, we do. Well, today's message, or the title of today's message, if I I was to put a title on it, would be this, Do I Have to Confess Every Sin? Wow, that is good. And that's something people get confused over. They're like, oh, no, I did this, and... I, I, you know, I dropped a piece of paper on the ground and I should have picked it up. Oh, God, do I have to repent over that? So we get into these kind of things with people sometimes, and then they're half repenting for stuff, and so we're going to clear that up Yeah, today. we're talking about as a Christian, do we as need to co- confess every sin? Well, you know, Al, there's this scripture in 1 John 1, 9 that's very, very, uh, you know, it's controversial. It's not really, but, I mean, there's two sides of it. I'd like to read it to you, and there are two different... Uh, uh, ways that people believe this. First John 1 John 1.9 uh, says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there's two different views here. Some say that this is referring to the initial born again experience. And there's reasons that they say that. I'm not going to go into that now. But others say that this is meant for Christians. The Bible was written to Christians, as they say, and so this is meant for Christians, and when Christians sin, they should confess their sins to God, and if they do, God will forgive them. So there's two different ways of of going with this, but let's back up a little bit and and see exactly what happened at the cross. Yeah, okay, I'm going to read this. This is in Hebrews 1 and 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. In the Old Testament, animals died in place of the sinner for forgiveness for their sin. That's right. But, but that was just temporary until Jesus came. Jesus made the atonement. That's that right. was just keeping this thing um, up until then when the atonement is when it was finished. Um, but that was just temporary until Jesus came and he died in the place of the sinner. That's right. He took our punishment. Jesus said this on the cross, it is finished. That's right. And I always say when it's when Jesus said it, it was finished, it was all done. All your redemption was done. All your forgiveness was done. All your prosperity was done. All your healing was done. It's all done. Now it's on. It's almost like he took this whole thing and he threw it onto you. What are you going to do with it? Wow. wow. Really? That's good. That's what he did. He threw it all on you. I did, you know, how much can I do? He did it. That's right? It, it's kind of like you're, in a, you know, you're a boss man in a company and you have all these workers and you take up and you give it all to one of your people. You say, here, it's all on you. Make this go. Yeah. Well, I can see why people think that this uh, scripture is talking about the initial salvation experience because I... You know, I can think that way, too, because where it says cleansed from all unrighteousness. So once we're born again, we now become righteous before God. We we are made made righteous. We are made righteous before God. So now we have a new position. Now our position in Christ is that of righteousness. So when it says being cleansed of all unrighteousness, that makes sense to me, the born again experience. But another thing that happened at the cross is that we are now forgiven of past, present, and future sins. Okay, and I want to read you Colossians 2.13. You know, let me just bring up one point before we go there. A lot of people think you have to repent of every sin every time. And that means really Jesus has got to go back on the cross again (laughs) and die for all the new sins, the future sins that you're, you know, you're talking about here. And he isn't going to do that. So it is a once and for all. Yeah, let me read you this. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has resurrected together with him, having forgiven you all sins. This is Colossians 2.13. So it's not that once you're a Christian, God will forgive you of sin. He 
forgave you of sin. And as far as future sins, which is a very uh, controversial subject, also a lot of people say, oh, those that's the greasy grace people. They think, you know, they think that future sins, that, that's not correct. God can't forgive you of your future sins. Well, let's hope he does, okay? <laughs> because Jesus died before I was ever born. Jesus died before I ever committed a sin. If my sin wasn't forgiven from the time he died on the cross, then I've got a problem. So, but Al, this position of righteousness that we have when we come to the Lord and when we receive him, we, we, when we become born again, it does, just because we're righteous, okay, doesn't mean we will not commit unrighteous acts. See, that's, that's totally different. You, know, you have to understand, being, we were made righteous. Right. It's who you are. It's not necessarily what, what you, you do. do. Let Good. me give you an example of this, so just so you can understand this. When my father died, he, he was pretty sick, and he had all these nurses and, and girls 24-7 that took care of him. And they took care of him more than I ever did. And they were there all day, every day. But when he died, I received the inheritance, not the girls, right. because I was his son. Right. Do you understand you now? That position so they could his say, son. I, that's right. my position. I am made righteous. Right. Now, being I was his son, maybe I didn't live perfectly. Maybe I said bad things to him. Didn't matter. I was his son. And when he died, I got the inheritance. All the girls that worked for him, they didn't get anything. They got a, a, a severance pay. It's That's who I am good. that got, That's got right. me that position. It's not position, what you did. Very right? good. You That's understand? awesome. So you got to understand that when it says we were made righteous or we, the righteousness of God in Christ is what we have. It's who we are. And as I said, maybe I didn't treat my dad that good. Maybe I did treat him good. That wasn't the issue. The issue was I was his son. Praise God. You know, so... Um, well, what else can the scripture mean? Let's go into the Christian part of it, because we can see how it could be the initial born-again experience. What about the second possibility? Alan? All right, let, well, let's talk about a second possibility of what this scripture could mean. In Romans 6 and 10, it says this, For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. To Praise repeat God. what I said earlier, we are forgiven of past, present, and future sins because he died once. That's right. And uh, well, well if, we're, if we're already forgiven, then why must we confess our sins over and over and over if we're already forgiven? Or do we have to? Or do we have to? That's good. That's you know, good. I had a guy that worked for me many years ago, and um, <laughs> he went to one of those, I call them a holiness, back then they called them a holiness church. And you had to live 100% holy all day, every day to go to heaven. And you had to have your hair could only be so long. I think the women couldn't wear makeup. I don't remember, but he belonged to one of these churches. And uh, we were riding in the, in the car, and he was talking to me about it. Now, this man was an awesome man of God. He loved God. He just did everything for God. He was a good guy. And then he's in the car, and he goes, oh, no, I think... I sinned, no, oh, no, I'm going to hell, I'm going to hell. And I'm trying to drive, and I'm going, what, what, what just happened? And he thought of some sin he had committed yeah. that he forgot to repent of. Oh, wow. So he said, oh, I got to repent of that sin. So he repented of the sin, and I, you know, I'm driving like, uh oh, I got a problem here. And what he said to me was, all of that, what he did meant nothing, because if there was one single sin that he so in other words, if he had forgotten to repent of that sin, he would go to hell if he died. Wow. So he was constantly trying to find these sins, and he would repent of this sin because he said, from the time I sinned to the time that I repented of it, if I died, I would go to hell. So I, I said to him, I said, I said, sir, sir, I want to be respectful and everything, but why are you so stupid? I said... <laughs> You're saved by what you believe, not by what you do. And then you know what I said to him? I took him right out with this one. I said, you know, in the Old Testament, it talks about unknown sin. And he just looked at me and, I, and he said, well, I don't know. And I said, well, that's right. It's an unknown sin. Wow. So if you have an unknown, according to him, if you had an unknown sin that you didn't repent of, how would you repent of an unknown sin? Right, right. Right? <laughs> 
And so anyway, I got finally broke through that mm -hmm. you're standing with God. Your position going to heaven is based on what you believe, not by what you do or sin or no sin. And so mm -hmm. really, if you think about that, you are forgiven past, present. You future. have to be or, or, or we would miss a sin. Right. Let me just say that. It's impossible to remember it all. That's what you were just saying. Exactly. So right. when we're born again, do we, we do not have to confess every single sin we commit. It's impossible, and this is my point. It was impossible for him because he said to me, basically riding in the car, if we had had a crash and he had died, he would have gone to hell. A lot of people, I, I even see a lot of people on TV giving those testimonies. One guy had a fight with his wife, and he went to stand before Jesus. He got in a car wreck on the way to work, and he went to stand before Jesus. And, and he said he was going to hell because he didn't repent of that sin uh, of oh, yeah, fighting he's, with his he wife. He was mad at his wife. That, that's awful. That's an awful thing. God would never put you under a burden like that. That is just not the way it is in New Testament Christianity. It just isn't. But, you know, first of all, Al, we're not commanded. We, you know, in the New Testament, we're not commanded to confess our sins to God. It's good for us, but he doesn't command us to confess our sins. He's, this is only telling us what will happen and what he'll do if we do confess our sins. You know, I, I, don't, I don't see any problem with confessing anything that we've done uh, that we know we've done wrong. It's good. You know, I, I always say this, that it's impossible to know every sin <laughs> and, you know, some people go by the severity of the sin. Yeah. Like if it's like, if it's a, you know, like if I stole a pencil from work, I'm not even going to repent of that one. It's not worth repenting over. Well, that's a sin. Right. It says if you, if you sin in the smallest point of the law, you're guilty of the whole law. Right. Of course, we know Jesus died for all of that. Yeah. And don't misunderstand me. I do believe you should live right. And I say it this way. This is what the Lord said to me. You, can, you can't live holy. You'll never do it. You can, but what you can do is live clean. Mm -hmm. You don't have to steal things. You don't have to be a liar. Right. And it's just a different mindset. As I said, we were made righteous. Right. My behavior should reflect who I am. And my behavior will it honor should. God or dishonor God. But sometimes it doesn't. Uh, reflect who, who we are. You know, we, right. like I said, we're righteous, but we may not act righteous. You know, it's good to confess your sins to God. It, it's, you know, there's obviously you know you've done something, whether you made a harsh statement or you lied, or even if it was a little lie, lie is a lie, whatever it might be, you know, you know you did that. And what is wrong? Al and I find it so easy to say those things to God. And I want to tell you, some people out there would say, you shouldn't have to confess your sins. And again, I say you don't have to, okay? But it is good to do it. Uh, because, uh, you know, God loves you anyway, and you're forgiven of future sins, and you just have a sin consciousness. Well, no, that is not a sin consciousness. I'm reminding myself when I do that that I'm already forgiven. You know, it's easy for Al and I, like I said. You know why it's easy? Because we have a relationship with God. And we have a relationship with Jesus, and it's so. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you apologize to a friend if you did something to hurt their feelings or did something wrong? God has been so good to me and so good to Al that it makes us want to. You know, we recognize some of the things that we do wrong, and then we 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 are in agreement with God. You know, Al. Some, I often think of David. You know, David. Not only did he commit adultery, but he he murdered the husband of. Um, of the, his mistress yeah. or, or whatever. But the one thing about David was when he was confronted, and I, I, I do believe sooner or later he would have repented of that anyway, okay? But God called him a man after my own heart. And the reason why I think he did that is because when David was confronted, he agreed. He agreed with what God said about his sin, and then he repented. Because most people just put a veil over their eyes and they don't, they don't, they just or they off. deny it or they make oh. excuses or they don't take, uh, you know, responsibility. But he agreed. And I believe that that is why God called David a man after his own heart because he agreed. And, but and nobody lives perfectly. Right. Nobody lives. We were, when, you know, you were talking about you have a sin consciousness. Yes. You don't have a sin consciousness, you have a sin reality. Sorry, people sin. They do it. Oh, that's good. Okay, that's good. and that's going to happen. 
Me personally, as you were saying, I just feel as though it helps me to just come before the Lord and say, Lord, I did this, I did that, and just forgive me for these things. Let's clean this up. God's already forgiven me. He's he's literally standing there, ready and willing to forgive me instantly, but he already did. But he'll let me know. And I just bring this before the Lord, and I just say, Lord, I, you know, this is me personally. It's the way I operate. I just say, forgive me, and it makes me feel better, and it helps me. You know, I, I can tell you that, um, <clears throat> you know, the Bible says he'll remember our sins no more. And I can just tell you that I've repented of sin before the Lord, and then an hour later, I'm like, oh, no, Lord, you don't know what I did. And I go through the whole, confess the whole thing all over again. And the yeah. Lord said to me, look. I forgot all of this the first time, <laughs> but now that you reminded me, I'm going to do this all over again. We're going to do all this repenting and everything all over again. Let's get this over with. So you know what? Do it once. Just come before the Lord, repent of whatever you want to repent of, and go on with your you life. You know, God, God says, God's word says that he chooses to remember our sins no more. Right. Why can't we? Because we can't. I, I, I know, I know, but it's a choice. It's not, you know, we'll always remember yeah, the things we've done, but it's... The choice is not to beat yourself up over it. Right. Because you would want to remember that so that next time you don't do it. Well, that's right, and you can learn stuff We want to improve is what we want to do. But this is like a hard issue. To me, this is a hard issue. Uh, again, like I say, God's been so good to me, I, I don't want to hurt him. Um, I want to do the right thing, and sometimes I just let my flesh get in the way, and I screw up big time. But, you know, I, I know that I'm forgiven, you know, and I, I go to the Lord, and I say, Lord, man, I am so sorry. You didn't deserve that. I was not a good representation of you. I didn't represent you well, uh, and uh, it, it wasn't good of me to do that. I'm really sorry, but thank you that you have already forgiven me because of what you did on the cross. I mean, really, to he me, stands that's awesome. ready and willing to remove the guilt. He wants to pull that guilt he out wants of you. To, and that's, that's the best right. way to just feel better, to get the guilt out, is just say, Lord, forgive me for this, forgive me for that, whatever you did, right. and just go on. Right. It's the guilt and condemnation and the shame. And the shame. And people experience all three when they sin. And and I'm not talking about the big sins. I'm talking about even the little sins, you know. And the closer I get to God, the more I realize the little things that I do that are not necessary and really considered a sin in the Bible, but, but unknowingly. But I have to tell you, if you do know of something that you're doing continually or whatever and, and it's not lining up with the Word of God, my goodness, You know, let God love on you. You know, just go to him and tell him and be honest with him. He knows everything anyway. Yeah. You know, it's not that he But you know, like I said, I like to come before the Lord and ask for forgiveness because it's almost, take a father and son relationship. Mm -hmm. If my son does something, I might not even know what he did. Right. But he doesn't really have to come to me to say, forgive me because... I've kind of already forgiven That's him. Exactly he's, right. Regardless, he's my son. But it's good that he does because in part, it's like respecting me. It's showing, look, I did this one right. Forgive me for it. Do you see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and it's good for him. It's good too. for him and it's good, it's good for me. But my point yeah. is I'm setting up this relationship thinking. Even though as far as I'm concerned, he's forgiven. He's always my son. He's just it, non-issue. But it's good for him to come before me and say, and you know what? That kind of, clears the air. Yeah. It's like, that's behind yeah. us. Let's move on. And so it helps us. That's right. It helps us. That's awesome. Uh, and there's another reason to confess your sin. And this is a biggie. <laughs> um, it gets the devil out of the picture. Getting the oh, yes. devil out of the mix is what I always yes. call it. Because what you're doing is you're when you f- for ask God to forgive you, you're, you're not giving the devil anything to work with. He has nothing... He, he, he's, he's basically destroyed. Whatever he has, he stole it from you. Wow. That's what he has, what, he, what you let him steal. And he's going to steal your peace because wow. he's going to remind you of your sins. So it helps you to feel good. I've forgiven. You know, I, I always say this, Lord, I've done this, that, and that, and I need a crop failure on my sin. Forgive me. And I go ahead. Because you're letting that, you know, it's, it's like you're... Uh, it's like you're leaving the back door open. Absolutely. You're just inviting trouble. Absolutely. 
You know what I mean? You're you're letting him, you're giving him something to work with. That's right. So you know, being sorrowful and and repenting or just confessing is is good for you because it closes that that one little spot that the en- enemy might have to get in. It closes that right up. You know, and 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 Al, another thing is it, it it clears the relationship with God again. Like you were saying, it's not that God puts a wall up. Right, He doesn't. He doesn't do that. See, Adam and Eve it ran says away. He's quick to forgive. And yeah, slow that's to right. Anger. And Adam and Eve just ran away, and they were trying to hide from God because of their sin. And who was chasing them down? Yeah, God. wow. And you know, that's and, good. Yeah, and you know, you don't think He knew what they did? Yeah, he knew what they did, but he was chasing them down. Where are you guys? You know, he doesn't hold your sins against you because you've already been given. And But but we feel guilty. We feel condemned. So what do we do? We, we don't even talk to God anymore. We kind of just do the same thing in a different way, and we just kind of stay away from God. I know this girl who uh, I've been friends with her for years, and uh, she was going to church with me every week for years. And uh, so she met a guy, and um, she started... Living a different way. Mm. She, the minute she met him, she stopped going to church, and she has never gone she back. She felt dirty. She felt dirty, condemned, uh, un, yes, unclean, shame, ashamed, and everything. And she feels she doesn't deserve God to be in God's presence because of the lifestyle she's living. Now, granted, she shouldn't live that, and granted, you know, she might have consequences of it. But whatever, God is sta- chasing her down. Mm-hmm. That's what he's doing. He's chasing her down, trying to get to her and say, look, come and sit at my feet. Yeah. I can help you with this. You don't need to live this way. And I know somebody that uh, hadn't been in church for years and years and years. And one day she went and she walked into the church and she felt like the doors were going to fall off the building because she had finally come back to church. And the truth of the matter was God wasn't mad at her. He was just glad she came, and everybody well, exactly. there was glad she came. They weren't saying, "Wow, oh, where you exactly. been?" Exactly. They were glad. So, as far as First John one nine, you know, is it for the believer or is it for those who are unbelievers coming to the Lord? I think it's both. I think it's both. I think it's both. It's fair to say it's both. We are cleansed from all unrighteousness as unbelievers once we come and we are born again. And then the second thing is, if you're a Christian and you sin and you feel dirty and ashamed and you know you've sinned, you can come to the Lord and just say, God, I'm sorry. You see, again, it's the heart issue. Let him heal your heart. He has already forgiven you, and you need to receive that and let his love just pour out on you so that you can go on with your life and continue to serve him and continue to live in peace you know, we need and to, joy. I think we should pray. I think there's people out there that are saying, just, just lead us. So I'm going to lead you in a prayer of salvation, and I'm also going to pray for you that you're free from the guilt of thinking about yes. the sins. Because that's part of the cross. That's part it's, of the it's cross. It's not that he just died for our sins. He died to take away the guilt, condemnation, regret, and shame. Right. He did that. So let's pray. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Father, forgive me for not living for you. Forgive me for living for myself and living selfishly. Forgive me. Yes. Have mercy on me. Lord, I repent of all of that. And Lord, right now, I give you my life and I give you my heart. I give you all that I have and all that I am. It's all yours now, Lord. I give it to you and I give you all my sin. Jesus, cleanse me now. And if, you, if you're if you someone who is born again, we just give you, Lord God, all the sin. We repent of it, we give it all to you. You take it, I don't want it anymore. It's all yours. And so for those of you who are coming to Jesus for the first time, Lord, I give it to you. I give it all. I am now a Christian. Hallelujah. I now belong to you, Lord Lord Jesus. I am now made righteous. Praise God. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. And if you just prayed that prayer with us, then we believe you just got saved. Amen. And that's an exciting thing. Amen. And so we want to know of your decision. Okay, so why don't you go to victorylifeministries.org slash celebrate because we would like to send you a gift to celebrate with you. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. But I do want to mention my book, Misunderstood Scriptures, Clearing Up Misunderstood Scriptures. The topic today that we spoke of is in this book, 
Go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org to get your copy today. We love you. Be blessed. Remember, Jesus loves you and he's on your side and victory is yours through Jesus Christ. The Word of God tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15 to rightly divide the Word of Truth. It's important that we interpret God's Word correctly, because misunderstanding Scripture can be a big hindrance to walking in freedom and living the abundant life Jesus died to give us. Some wrongly interpret certain passages without even realizing it, and as a result, they don't experience the positive results they desire. Over the years, I too have not understood certain scriptures the way God intended, and there were reasons for this. One was that I had received wrong teaching in the past, which I had to unlearn. Another reason was that I was taking scripture out of its context. But once I learned the foundational truth of God's love for me, and that He approves of me no matter what, then everything fell into its proper place within His Word. In our latest book, Clearing Up Misunderstood Scriptures, Al and I share the misconception of familiar Bible passages, the danger of being deceived, and the victorious life you can experience when you understand God's Word correctly. Get your copy today at VictoryLifeMinistries.org. God wants you to prosper financially. It is His will for you to live in financial freedom. The truth is, this is one of the reasons Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. Not only can you be free from sickness, disease, fear, worry, or any hold the devil may have on you, you can also have a life of financial prosperity. In my book, Walking by Faith into Prosperity, you will discover the reasons why God wants you to prosper. This book will not only teach you how to prosper God's way, but it will also cover areas in your life that may be blocking these blessings from coming your way. In Psalm 35, it says, The Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of His servants. It brings great pleasure to God when His children prosper. Check out this resource on VictoryLifeMinistries.org and we hope and pray that God blesses your life. We can't wait to see you next time on Victory Life Today. Al and Angie Burke are the founders of Victory Life Ministries, an organization that is designed to help you live your best life so that you would be inspired and know that God will fulfill all of your needs according to His purpose. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance.